Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Tasty Tidbits Podcast. Get ready to receive rich, well-seasoned, and tasteful tidbits to transform your life. Each week, Dr. Tiffany comes to you with inspirational encouragement and thought-provoking interviews to help you revolutionize your walk with God. Are you hungry for more of His presence? Then get ready. And now, your host, pastor, author, and motivational speaker, Dr. Tiffany Watkins. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Tasty Tidbits. I am your host, Dr. Tiffany Watkins, and I'm so excited to have you here today on another episode. And today we have a special guest, and her name is Donna Tashjian. And I'm so excited to talk about baggage. And I'm going to give you a little bit of information about Donna, and then I'm going to let her introduce herself. But Donna is the founder of Vibrant Living International, which is a nonprofit organization. She helps people to bring accelerated trans transformation to people across the world and her passion is to help you reach your full potential. Donna has been speaking and coaching for over 25 years. She's also developed powerful programs that help women to rise above painful paths so they can live their life of their dreams. Most of her clients have really enjoyed her program. The majority of them always begin to give comments and different things but one particular client uh, expressed where she says uh, Donna is always helping you and she will help you walk away from overwhelming stress and self-doubt into peace and confidence like a refreshing vacation for your body and soul. Donna is also uh, a podcast host where you were designed for greatness and she's also written four books. Her clients say that she has a knack for turning fear into excitement and exposing lies so that truth can shine through through. So I am so excited to have you here today, Donna. Thank you again for being a part of a part of our podcast today. Uh, would you let the listeners know a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Thank you, Tiffany. It is a pleasure to be here and sharing today. Um, I love doing this, being able to meet such amazing people all over the world. It's just a, a lot of fun for me. Um, a little bit more about me is i am uh, been married for 38 years. Um, I have three married children. I have eight grandchildren. And I love tea of all kinds and, and jazz music. Yes, I love tea as well. Actually, I got me some tea right beside me now drink with me. I love tea. I think it's so relaxing. Yes, I agree. <laughs> well, we're talking about baggage today. And, you know, in life, we carry a lot of baggage with us. So can you briefly discuss some of those baggages that we carry? <laughs> well, that can be a long list. I know. Um, baggage to me is anything that I am, that has happened in my life that I still feel angst about. I still have, if you mentioned it, I go, ugh, or something like that, that there are negative emotions attached to it. Um, so you can have things have happened to you and not feel that way anymore, which is what my goal is in helping people. But it's feelings of low self-esteem, um, not good enough, uh, traumatic events, that have occurred there's all kinds of things that uh one of the analogies i use about baggage is is that we hide our baggage and you know lock it away and pretend like it's not there and you know it can get to stinking <laughs> mm -hmm. yes <laughs> yes that is so true. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that too, because um, I shared with the listeners, we had an, um, another uh, podcast episode a couple of weeks ago, and I uh, was just talking about an experience that I had went through in my high school years of um, being raped and having to deal with the issues and the things that came with that. And I realized that I was free from that when I no longer had uh, anger feelings towards yeah. it, and I was able to be free from it. So basically, it's the same thing 
thing, letting go of that baggage um, and that hurt and those things in order to uh, move forward and go forward. And time doesn't heal it necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, Mm -hmm. it's one of the things we, you know, if I just ignore it and just give it enough time and that's not necessarily the case. Um, I was 14 and someone that I knew hurt me and I became pregnant. Mm -hmm. So we have similarities in our story and it is, uh, a lot of things that happen to a little girl's self-esteem when that kind of thing happens. Mm-hmm. To us. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. And so it took me a long time before I could talk about my story. There was so much shame and embarrassment and um, all of those kind of things attached to it. But it is when you don't, when you can talk about it almost like it happened to somebody else, because in actuality it, it did because I'm different now, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. um that's a sign that you've been able to transform your baggage. That's good. That is good. And, you know, I, there was a time where at first I could not do that. You know, I would always feel the emotions or Mm -hmm. if I would see that individual, I would just tense up and, you know, just little things would go. But there came a time where I was like, you know what, I'm, you know, I've finally gotten past that where it doesn't bother me anymore. And so it's important, um, not just for the other person, but for us as well as individuals uh, to, to go through that process. So that we can uh, get rid of that baggage and what you call it, Donna, uh, turning your baggage into luggage and (laughs) getting rid of that. And so many people, a lot of times they feel chained to their past uh, and we have to, you know, get past that. So what is one of the ways that we could release our past emotions? Because that's a big thing. I have four steps that I go, I, I talk about and they're, they're simple, but not always simple to do. (laughs) (laughs) And it's steps from going from baggage thinking in my analogy to luggage thinking and baggage thinking. The, one of the first steps is I call it searching for the gift, looking for something that I can learn and grow. For example, what happened to you and I, we can't change it. It's part of us. Right. It became part of us. And we can't change it. We can't make it go away. But how can I use this to grow and become stronger and help other people instead of being defined by the incident or incidents that occurred in our life is learning to look for the gift. I call these things gift wrapped in sandpaper. They rub us the wrong way. They are (laughs) nothing pretty wrapped in bows for us, but there are things that we can get stronger and, um, and be more resilient than we were before in through those things. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is learning to be able to keep a bigger picture in mind. If your life was a book, don't let what happened to you be your whole book. Let it be a paragraph or a page or a chapter in your life. But a lot of times, I don't know about you, but when I was in the middle of all that, it felt like it was going to be my whole life and mm-hmm. it felt like forever that I would never be past it. Mm-hmm. But it's beginning to lift my eyes up and realize, and the idea of looking for a gift shifts my eyes from my feet, if you will, to, to the horizon. Um, what comes to mind is I look, I look up where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord mm-hmm. and learning to be able to bright, lift our vision and know this is hurting. This is hard. This isn't fair. This isn't right. This isn't just, but it's not forever. And that I will come through this and beginning to do that's number two. Number three is developing compassion for others. It's that word that when we're in the middle of it, we don't want to talk about that's word forgiveness. And when I begin to actually learn what true forgiveness is, it sets me free. I've heard it said, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping the other person gets sick. Mm -hmm. And we have in learning what having compassion and really forgiving how it sets me free and it has nothing to do with the other person. Uh, That is number three. 
And the fourth one is get support and get help. So many of the time, shame makes us hide it. We don't talk to people. We don't get support. We don't get help. And learning to be able to, we weren't meant to do this stuff alone. Let's, let's get the right safe help to be able to help us through it. So those are four steps. What are your thoughts? I, I, I agree with all of those. And I was, even as she was talking, because, you know, I had several experiences. That was just one. And I ended up eventually uh, writing a book about uh, my experience that I had went through. And part of the process is that what you said is you have to be able to forgive because forgive, uh, when you don't forgive, you're still tormenting yourself. You're allowing yourself to continue to be tormented. Um, and you have to begin to place those things. And for me, placing those things on God, I remember I was at a conference and we were just talking about healing and going through that process. And all of a sudden the tears just started to flow. And I realized that I had to place all of those things, those anxieties on God, realize that it wasn't my fault, you know, because for a long time, you know, as children, mm-hmm. you think you've done something wrong. Right. You, you, you think that it was you that uh, had did something wrong for you to attract this person or this to come because I was young, um, even when I uh, was sexually abused, uh, even younger at age of three, um, just had encounters and different things and just didn't understand a whole lot. But, pe- and I had a lot of people say, you know, why didn't you give up on God or why you didn't? And I said, I'm not going to blame anybody else. I can't explain everything, why people do what they do, but I have to be able to go through the forgiveness process for me in order to be able to go forward so all of those what that you mentioned as far as getting rid past those emotions are definitely true and you have to realize one of the key things I think is and I know is that we can't continue to uh look at ourselves and say what did I do or what could I have done better we can only take what we have and move forward from there you know and that's one of the things that I've learned from that as well absolutely completely Mm -hmm. agree with that is learning that um i may have we may have made mistakes but beating ourselves up because we did or didn't Mm -hmm. um especially but when you know i'm i'm with you i had things happen as a child too and there's an understanding and loving yourself when those things because you know we do this kind of stuff for a living and then we get triggered (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's like, oh my goodness! And then I'm mad at myself. I remember I had something that happened that triggered me about eight years ago, and I'm like, I've been doing this for this long. Why is this? Not- <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> oh, and then I'm like, oh, you know better. Stop beating yourself up, and you know, and just being understanding. The way that I I'm choosing to is when those kind of things happen. Is God has a new level of freedom for me. Mm-hmm. and just walk through it <clears throat> and get to the other side because there's just more and more things that uh, we are more than we think we are and learning how to grow and to step into that is one of my favorite things to help people do. Yes and Donna you know it's kind of like a, a banana you're taking a banana and it's like you're peeling layers you know we want everything to the healing to happen immediate, immediately and sometimes it doesn't it takes layer to come off and then another layer then another layer and then finally you realize that you're finally free and healed enough to be able to share your story or to help others to go through that because I do realize that even though I went through that there have been a lot of people that I've been able to um, encourage that have gone through the same things that I have gone through Um, and so even with that we have a um, part to play I believe in helping others to get past their process of what they've been through because if they've seen that you've gone through it that'll give them more encouragement to say that I can make it through as well absolutely I've had people say that Donna how do you do that how do you get transformation in your programs and I jokingly say I just have this magic booth that people into, <laughs> and then it's just abracadabra and everything's better and we would love that um the analogy God gave me about forgiveness is is instead of the banana analogy I say the same thing just a different vegetable and fruit is is like an onion I forgive and I peel it and I cry 
And then I'm like, okay, for a little while. And then something happens and I forgive deeper. It isn't that I didn't forgive the first time. It's that Mm -hmm. it's going deeper and being able to be more free. So learning to embrace the journey um, and look for the joy instead of being critical about ourselves, as we can do. Yes, yes, because sometimes we can. And I, you know, and I even thought about that as far as growing up and, and, and when you experience things, even as you get older and even in life, if you don't deal with it and you do deal with it, you're going to experience it and you'll see it come up in little ways and little areas of your life. And one of the ways that I um, experienced it is through um, not feeling like I never could do enough. I, you know, that having that perfectionism, it's like, I completed this. Now let me complete something else. Now I've done this. Now let me do something else. And if I do this, I'll get better at this. And it's just like a constant, constant, constant trying to do things in order to be fulfilled and not realizing that we're fulfilled in Christ and we're fulfilled in God. And I had to realize that a part of that stemmed for what I had went through back then, but it just had, had to make the determination and the decision decision to know that I am enough. So um, I know you can agree with the own part of it, but why do you feel like um, we as women feel like we never do enough? (laughs) (laughs) Boy, if we had the answer to that. (laughs) Oh my goodness, that overachieving mentality. Mm -hmm. It's like, let me prove that I have value. Let me Mm -hmm. prove that I... (laughs) I can do more and do greater. And, um, and then the flip side of that coin is, is that the one who does procrastinates and never tries. So both of those things stem from that low self-esteem that somehow I need to prove my worth. Um, and it's, I, I think it's common in the way this world system is. And when I just, determine world system it's different than the way god's kingdom is designed mm-hmm. is what i mean the difference between everything in the world is performance based mm-hmm. my value is determined on the work that i do or what i do and whether you like me or not and that is the way our world system is set up god's system when we become his children in in my perspective is is now it's based on what god says Mm -hmm. about me Mm -hmm. and most of the things if you were going to say how much is your house worth or how much is your car worth it would be what somebody would be willing to pay for it and what a piece of art is how much somebody will pay for it is what they determine is the value of it when we look at that look at the price that was paid for us we are priceless Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. learning to be able to get that revelation is one of the things that I help people through is learning that your value is more than what you do. You are a human being, not a human doing was one of the things God said to me and learning how to just be me and then do the things from that place of security instead of the place of performance. hmm And that's a process. I was just sitting here, even while you were saying that, because I remember um, uh, just always feeling like at a point in time back then that I just had to complete more, do more, do more, do more. And I see, I I can see it in some of the children that I work with now, because you get praised that, you know, you've done this. Yay. We praise Mm -hmm. you for doing this. We praise you for doing this. And, you know, and some of the children that I've worked with, if, if they make less than an A, they are devastated and they're like, you know, um, and we do want them to strive for excellence, but we also have to show them that, you know, you could, if you didn't make it, you can get it another time. And that's very crucial, I think, in their self-esteem so that they'll be able to go forward, um, understanding that they're not going to be perfect, you know, and we're not in a perfect world. but it can be challenging at times to do that but it is most it's important for us to help them to understand that yes absolutely Mm -hmm. we are not in a perfect world that perfection line always moves we never ever get there (laughs) right Um, right (laughs) and you know the other thing about you know if I am not super great at math and I get a b or a c that could be perfection for me. 
Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. if I'm really good at science or something different in that one is I get A pluses. Um, it's just a lot of it is a her giftings and our bents and the way that we are created and we get into the comparison thing. This so right. learning how to not compare ourselves to somebody else, yeah. compare myself to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's very important. And we have to be able to, you know, be content. You know, the Bible tells us be content in whatever state we are in. Um, And sometimes in life with everything that's going on, it's such a challenge to be content. But what is something that you could share with our listeners of that we could just live a life of simplicity and contentment? Well, that's a big question. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, um, simplicity and contentment. Contentment is an interesting word because we think that uh, if I'm not content, um, I'm ungrateful. And what I've learned is, is I can be grateful from where I am, where I am today and have gratitude around it, still desiring to do more or be more. So the discontent sometimes is a longing in our heart to be better or to grow, but learning to be able to be happy with where I am on my journey, even though I may not want to stay where I am on my journey. To me, that is that is one of the keys to finding, if you will, contentment with where I am on my journey is understanding mm-hmm. it's, it's where I am on my journey today. Mm-hmm. If I am struggling today that I can be kind to myself and understand that that's where I am on my journey as opposed to being self-critical and judging and all of the things that we can do Mm -hmm. (laughs) in those those days (laughs) but understanding one of the keys for me for being content is understanding that Oh, this is a good one. This one just came to me. Is are, do we do you realize? Have you ever really thought about it that you can't disappoint God? Wow. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> disappointment. If you disappointed me, I was thinking you were going to do something you didn't do. Correct. Right. Right. But God is not ever disappointed because he knows exactly what we're going to do when we're going to do it in our whole life plan. So we didn't surprise him by messing up. That's good. We surprise him by making a mistake. We didn't surprise him. He's not discontented or dis, um, disappointed with us. And he we can never do anything to make him love us more. And we can never do something to make him love us less. And when I realize that and I really meditate on that and get that deep inside, then I have uh, inner joy that it's okay and that I'm on a journey. Yes. And I love, I love the way you worded that. It's like we're on a journey um, and everybody's journey is unique. Yes. Um, and, and we have to understand that. And, and it's so important. And we can, we have, and, and even in looking at that, that should help us not to be critical, so critical upon others who are going upon their journey. Absolutely. Um, and so many times I think where you were saying early, we get discontented. And so in order to take the heat off of our journey, then we can sometimes be critical of other people's journey when should, we should just be continue to focus on the journey that God has us on to continue to make ourselves uh, the best that we are supposed to be in him through his blood, you know, but we can be so critical sometimes of others not realizing, hey, everybody has a journey. Sometimes we want, you know, family um, mothers want the children to just get it. You can, why can't you just get it? You know, you know, you know, <laughs> but it's their journey, you know, Absolutely. and we had our journey. And so we have to be patient at times that know that they have to go through their journey and cycle as well. And it's so important, you know, that we realize that. And I think sometimes we forget that. I agree. <laughs> so, you know, I, Uh, You had mentioned something earlier when we talked about a little bit about, you know, I need to prove others wrong because of the things we may have gone through in life or we didn't feel like we were enough. And so when we finally accomplish something, it's like we're proving to our enemies or proving to people who say that we wouldn't make it, uh, that we did make it. But that can be an issue. So can you just um, 
let me know or let the listeners know why do we believe that you know oftentimes there's a need to feel like we have to prove others wrong when i constantly need to prove anything it puts me in a in a negative place if i need to prove i'm valuable and i need to prove others wrong it it uh creates a place where i'm constantly having to prove myself mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse mm-hmm. me. where but you know that statement in itself helped me i i did feel that way it's like i'm going to prove them wrong um it did help me through some difficult times in my life mhm you know i was just trying to think about that um cuz i hear it all the time you know they think i'm not going to do it i'm going to prove them wrong and i've even said it you know you know they they're looking for me to fail but i'm not going to fail they're not going to prove them wrong but when in reality the only audience that we should be uh, con- um looking towards is god you know that's the way if yes. if we're looking to please him if we're looking to um just have a relationship with him then we we won't be concerned about um what others are often thinking about where we are going and what we are doing because they didn't create us <laughs> you know when i when i just the statement that i need to prove you wrong elevates your opinion even perhaps above god's mhm mhm and so when i realize that i am elevating your opinion of me and what i'm doing above what god has said that's wow. enough to make me stop in my tracks and say mm-hmm. okay mhm i may want to get motivated to to do something better but it needs from a place where i am doing it because god wants me to or god is helping me as opposed to proving something to you right right that is, that's good revelation that is so good because he is the only one audience that we need to be striving um to prove to or to show and 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 he already knows like you said earlier he already knows what's in us he already knows what we're going to experience he already knows um but we just have to make sure that our heart is towards him so that's that's very good you know um even in the world today uh with just everything that's going on and we've experienced the covid-19 um anxiety and depression mm-hmm. um You help you you help a lot of people, Donna. What is one way that listeners can start living a life of joy and peace because there's so much that's out there that we could be depressed about and have anxiety about, but what is a way that they can start living a life of joy and peace? <clears throat> one of the things to recognize about joy is it's not based on external circumstances. And its joy comes from the inside, not from the outside. Mm-hmm. when i realize as i recognize that is uh, the way that i say is whatever i focus on is magnified or amplified so if i'm focusing on all of the things that irritate me that are going wrong in the world <clears throat> in my opinion it's going to be all i see mhm and what so whatever i focus on is going to grow in my view in my estimation in my the way that i'm perceiving things but if i can shift and look instead of the things that i'm grateful for in my life in the world in circumstances then i begin to have the biggest to answer your question it's choosing gratitude mm-hmm. it's choosing to be grateful as opposed to focusing on what's going wrong so i tell a tell a joking story i've been married 38 years as i said and my husband's better but for much, most of our marriage his his socks could never quite make it into the laundry basket <laughs> and when i was when we were younger in our marriage that really irritated me and i would say things like can he just do that for me doesn't he doesn't he even appreciate me enough to just put his socks in the laundry basket man he just doesn't and i all day long i'm thinking about this and I'm just getting angrier and angrier of course he doesn't know this and he walks in the door and I'm angry and our evening doesn't go well mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or I can say all the thing when I look look at that and go yep that still really bugs me but man all of the things that he does that I appreciate all of the things that he does that I love 
mm-hmm. all of the things that I love about him. And no, he can't, that sock thing still bugs me. And when he <laughs> comes home, we have a completely different evening. Now, the circumstances were the same, but what I choose to focus on changed the way that my experience was. Yes, and I, I'm a very firm believer, and that's one thing that the Lord has been teaching me to, you know, always um, be thankful, you know, because there's someone else, someone else that could be worse off than where you are or dealing with a different situation that you may couldn't handle. And so we do have to have that gratitude to where we're thankful um for where we are at at that journey, as you had talked about early, being thankful along our journey, Mm -hmm. you know, and as we're thankful along our journey, (laughs) we won't stress out so much about the little distractions that try to come in and to get us to a point of where we're frustrated about things. And it's a process. Um, But the more we practice being grateful, the more we practice being thankful, the easier it does become to be grateful and thankful. It's a choice that we have to make. (laughs) <laughs> I agree. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a choice that we have to choose to make. And so, um, you know, some of the listeners, you know, they may have experienced a painful past and find it hard to move on. Um, what is the first thing you recommend they do in order to move on from the past? <clears throat> well, I talked about it some in changing from baggage thinking to luggage thinking and looking at those four steps and seeing which one they needed to give attention to. Mm -hmm. Um, would be something that I would recommend. I am always available if they wanted to schedule for a complimentary consultation Mm -hmm. to talk about what's personally going on in their life. And if my programs are a great fit, awesome. If not, uh, we can, I will help them find the resources that are. And if nothing, they don't need anything, then that, then I've made a friend. So right. I'm looking at it to win for all of us to be able to support each other and to help each other because we weren't meant to do this alone. And that is so true. And listeners, um, you can also, and I'll have Donna's information where you can get in touch with her because she is a life mastery coach. And um, she's been coaching and mentoring for, I believe it's over 25 years, Donna. Is that, yes. that how many years? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so for about 25 years, so she can and will be able to help you. Um, and also, you know, we deal with emotions all the time. You know, I don't know if men deal with emotion, women deal with emotions <laughs> more than men, but I think so. <laughs> and so we have to learn how to get through these emotions and, mm-hmm. um, you know, because everything isn't a problem. It's an emotion that we have to under- understand and recognize. This is an emotional thing that I'm going through right now um so how important is it to process you know our emotions safely and why is that so important i think everybody knows they're it's important i think we realize that it's just not always sure how to do it and one of the keys that has helped me and i don't know hundreds and hundreds of women that i work with is is the question is emotions does my feelings equal truth Mm-hmm. And not are they not real and not are they valid, but do they equal truth? Have you ever felt like someone was upset with you and later found out they weren't? Mm-hmm. Have you ever, and well, even a nightmare, it's like you have a bad dream and you wake up and your body and emotions have reacted and you're safe in your bed. And so it's recognizing that my emotions are not truth. What emotions actually are is an indicator of what I believe about myself. Mm -hmm. And when I began to look at emotions through those lenses, that this is an indication of what I believe about myself, my worth, my God, all of those things, it helps me to uncover what those hidden beliefs are and find help to be able to replace them with what is actually true. Because if you didn't like the dress I was wearing and I'm totally confident in who I am, I can recognize that that's your opinion. You don't like the dress. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But if I'm low self-esteem and you say something about my dress, like, where'd you get that? And I, maybe you like it, but you say, where'd you get it? And I think, oh my goodness, I thought I looked bad in this. 
then <laughs> that reflects my self, my beliefs about me. It doesn't reflect what you necessarily were saying or thinking. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That makes a whole lot of sense. <laughs> I was thinking about that because me and my sister, you know, um, she had an outfit one day and we, we, but because we know each other, and you know, she said, well, do you like this dress or do you like this? And I was like, no, that is ugly. I wouldn't wear it, blah, blah, blah. And so we started laughing. And so if she sees something with mine, she'd be like, I don't like it, whatever, you know. Um, but we both understand that you know that's just what we appreciate or what we don't like but it's not necessarily personally against you as a person right and I think I think sometimes we take so many things to put to heart and personal um that's not necessarily personal but it's something that we have to deal with in ourselves and within our self-esteem almost um, all rejection is somebody's opinion mm-hmm mm-hmm and whatever that looks like, it's their opinion of the way you talk, the way you act, the way you dress. If you think about how many kinds of music and art and cars and all the things that there are, there are so many opinions mm -hmm. and not everybody's going to like everything. And when I can realize, well, you know, you, you, you perhaps reject something that I've done or said, and I'm like, okay, well, that's your opinion and you're allowed to have your opinion but I don't have to make it about me and learning to be able to recognize that with the emotions. Um, don't stuff emotions, actually process them, get them out, find a way to do that, but learning that they have their place and not to elevate them to a place of kingship or lordship, but simply as a place as a servant. That's so good. You know, I was sitting here thinking, you know, that, uh, for a lot, we, you know, at times we have to get to that point again, where our focus and our dependencies and to serve God and please him, because the effect of what others think about us and how they feel about us when it may be something that may offend us, it wouldn't hit as hard or it wouldn't affect us as hard um, when we realize that that is just an opinion. Yes. And when you said that, I was like, it has to be a daily thing that we have to continue to grow to, I think, to an extent, Donna, um, to where it doesn't really affect you as much. <clears throat> um because if you're a caring person and, and you yes. want everybody to understand, it will affect you for a while, you know, and you have to learn how to uh, separate yourself from that um, to an extent. Sometimes I think men are a little bit better with that. I've had, you know, <laughs> men, they'll, you know, they're just like, mm -hmm. oh, oh I'm, I'm over that. I've already, you know, why are we going back to this, you know? Um, and sometimes they, they'll deal with it and move on. But so as women, we have to be careful and make sure uh, that we take the steps were necessary in order to protect our emotions and our, our emotional health yes yes our, it nobody likes rejection of any kind it's it's against our nature no one enjoys it but it you're right um i no longer go to bed and pull the covers over my head right <laughs> <laughs> right right oh yeah. but you know but it doesn't mean that it's like oh this is fun right it just means that i give it its proper place in in what my value is and and understanding that and and doing the best we can to get along with everyone and walk and be in love but mm -hmm. um but yes learning how to grow in this and be kind to yourself on your journey and you and you'll just do a little better each time mm-hmm mm -hmm. And that's so true. The more you, we go through life and the more we're willing to grow and the more we're willing to stretch ourselves out, um, the quicker we can get through it. It's a process, but we'll start to do it um, more often than not, I should say, if yes. we keep at it. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being on a podcast today, Donna. Um, would you let the listeners know how they can contact you? The easiest way would be my website. I am on social media. I have an unusual name, so it's pretty easy to find. But my website is the letter I, vibrantliving.com. The letter I, and also listeners will have that 
um, on this episode so that you'll be able to click right onto her link to be able to get in touch with her and get in contact with her in order to find out more about what she does. And in order to, if you, if you're going through a painful situation, if you're going through things in life or you want to, um, get to your dreams, but there's some things that may be hindering you, then Donna can help you with that. Again, she's been coaching for over 25 years. She's a mastery coach and she helps you to turn your baggage into luggage. And so if you're ready to turn your baggage into luggage, then contact her um, and just get the free consultation that you need because she's offers that free consultation. And so I thank you listeners for joining today. We are glad that you were able to be a part. We look forward to you coming back to the episode again on another episode, but thank you again, Donna, for being on the show today. I really appreciate having you today. My pleasure, Tiffany. All right, listeners, we will see you again on the next episode and you have a blessed day. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Tasty Tidbits with Dr. Tiffany Watkins. If you're enjoying the show, feel free to subscribe, rate, and share with your friends. To learn more about Dr. Tiffany, check out her blog on goodreads.com or visit her website at www.renewedfaithministriesinc.com. Until next time, stay blessed.